I, I started out in a musical family in North Mississippi. My mom was a piano player in our church, and and uh, we use music as our pretty much sole source of entertainment. There's, I joke about Mississippi uh, spare time being our major export there, but there's not a lot to do. Our neighbors would all come over to our house three, four nights a week, and my mom would play piano, and my dad would play guitar, and people would bring dulcimers and whatever made rackets and get out their gospel songbooks, and we'd stomp their feet and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes, even some of the underage folks, and, and make music. And that's, that's how my life started. That was the way I grew up. And we didn't have television. I, I complained about it, but in reality, looking back, I'm really glad that uh, we had all that music in my house. When I was a boy, four houses down from me was a family with an only child. And she was the only girl in this old world that can make me smile. Down the road, I made up reasons to go down the road. About 15 years old, I started playing in studios in uh, Muscle Shoals and in Tupelo, Mississippi. And Muscle Shoals, Alabama is still where my studio is today. And uh, was was lucky enough to to sort of learn how to make records at the feet of some really great record producers and some phenomenal, some of the best musicians in yeah. the world. Continually lucky enough to play on a bunch of records and, and sing on a bunch of records and get to write some songs for some wonderful folks and tour with some wonderful folks and open act. I'm, I'm uh, currently a member of the Coral Reefer Band with, with Jimmy Buffett and have been on his records and on the road with him for a long, long time. I've just had the most blessed life you can have doing my favorite thing in the world for a living and and uh and i get to do it again tomorrow so no complaints here and i was such a bashful kid that i would never actually sing even for my even for my mom and dad uh, i wouldn't they didn't know i was writing songs but they knew i was staying up later than they were that's really all that was going on and and, and when i wrote a song I would, I would remember what the words were going to be. I wouldn't write them down because I'd be afraid somebody would see them. Uh, and I would write the melody into the guitar part. Uh, you know, like my first record that ever came out was a song called It's a Crazy World, and it had the... The melody was always in the guitar part because then I wouldn't have to sing. Uh, yeah, I, it's my job I wrote for Jimmy Buffett, and it's sort of a little anthem and taking pride for what you do for a living, and the whole melody is is in the guitar part in case I get so bashful that I can't sing, you know. But uh, the, the songwriting, is, if there's probably one thing that I feel like I was put here to do, it's probably more that. And uh, they, they've, been, they've seen fit in at the Nashville Songwriters Association here, and they, they put me in the Nashville Songwriters Hall of Fame I think in 2008, and so I, I thought maybe I had to retire, but it turns out you don't. You get to keep, you get to keep going. So I'm, I'm still trying to get better, and still trying to get better at playing guitar every day because it's, you know, it, it's embarrassing what I want to play that I can't play still. So I, I, get, I look forward to all sorts of chances to still get better. I've had different heroes along, along the way. My, the, the, the fellow that showed me a little bit of guitar was. Uh, was a huge Chet Atkins fan, and uh, and my dad was a huge Chet Atkins fan. And my dad, in buying guitar, he would always say, you know, maybe you'll play like Chet someday. And he was always a bar, that, you know, not, not to look up to. I never anticipated clearing or equaling, but uh, but I, I was blessed enough to to get to meet Chet. I made a little record when I was 19 years old in Muscle Shoals, and. We came up to Nashville to sign some publishing stuff and sign up with ASCAP, and and, and I got a chance to, to meet Chet, and and that was a big deal because I was just thinking already how I'm going to exaggerate this story and make it extra wonderful when I go home and tell my dad that I met Chet Atkins. But the the first time that I met Chet, he, he asked me how I played a lick. He, he had already heard my album. And he said, okay, this first song on the second side, you're doing some sort of hammer and frailing banjo kind of thing. Show me how you do that. And 
So that that was actually my that was my compliment that I wrote on for years is that Chet asked me how I did something because <laughs> I didn't have a clue how he did anything. But but when I met him and he shook my hand, he asked me how I, and I did a little. Sort of the back of the nail stuff. You can do it with one finger, it's no big deal, but Chet asked me how to do it, so that was big for me. You know, I, was, I went home and I was, puffed my chest out and, you know, hey, Chet asked me how I did something, you know, and, and I had to actually figure out how I did it to answer him because <laughs> I'd just been doing it, you know. But, but anyway, Chet was an early hero. The Beatles were, were a massive hero of mine because of what they did in the studio. They invented studio techniques. Uh, almost all the studio techniques that we use today, they, they invented. And, and this year, I got to play in front of Paul McCartney in a small concert setting, and, and 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 he didn't ask me how I did anything, but he came up and hugged my neck and said, "Let me let me rub some of you on me," and and we had a nice talk about how cool it is to play music and get to call that a job. And and I ride around with some of my heroes. I got to play with James Taylor this year, sing along with James Taylor at the Boston Strong concert for the bomb victims up there. It's, it's just. It's been a very blessed life. I, I could I could name heroes a long time. Ry Cooter was a big hero of mine because all that that little popping stuff that he does. You know, I never got the hang of it 100 percent, but I sat around and, and listened to my little mono record player and tried to figure it out. And and there there was a great joy in that. My introduction to McPherson would not be the traditional one. Uh, I I made I made my first little singer-songwriter record I made when I was 19 years old and they put a they put a single out from that album called It's a Crazy World and uh, did fairly well went up in the charts and was in the easy listening charts and I was just a yokel from Belmont Mississippi wearing my grandfather's painters overalls and didn't have a clue about anything had never been anywhere they put me on a plane to Los Angeles I didn't I, I, I kind of did the whole thing on a dare I couldn't believe anybody wanted to make a record on me and uh, Anyway, had had some measure of success, and that song's what introduced me to Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy wrote me a note and said, we're going to be friends, we're storytellers, we're both from Mississippi, and, and great things came from that song via Jimmy Buffett. And uh, and Matt McPherson heard this song wherever he was. I, I guess that may have, may have been in Wisconsin, I guess. I don't know where he was at the time. I didn't know Matt. but. Uh, but he he didn't know who sang the song, but the song made an impression on him. And uh, I I didn't know about the guitars and I didn't know who he was, but he was working with my my great friend Lenny LeBlanc and Muscle Shoals, and they were doing some recording together. And uh, it's my understanding Matt had a conversation about there's this, there's this song from a long time ago that blew me away, and I just always said when I get the guitar thing down. I'm going to find this guy that wrote this song and make him a guitar. And Lenny said, what song? And he said, he said, well, it's called It's a Crazy World. And Lenny goes, oh, that's Mac. He's just, you know, he's 10 minutes from here. And he said, you're kidding. And so my introduction to McPherson Guitars was, was Matt McPherson knocking on my door kind of late at night, actually, in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And uh, he had a guitar in each hand. And he said, you don't know me? I hope it's okay. Lenny told me where you lived, and uh, and and he had a he had a maple, and he had an acacia guitar. And he said, I, "I'm I'm making guitars, and I would love to make a guitar for you. Your song made an impression on me a long time ago." And I said, "If I ever meet this guy, I'm giving him a guitar." He said, "These are my two guitars that I use. You can have your favorite of these two, and if you don't like either one of these two, I'll make you one." And that's about the nicest door-to-door. Uh, -door. <laughs> non-salesman thing that ever happened at my house in Muscle Shoals is because they were both, either one of them would have been one of the best guitars that I'd ever played. And, and I still have the little Acacia guitar sitting down in my studio, which I call La La Land in, in, in Muscle Shoals. And uh, it's been on a zillion records. The first time I recorded my, my very first Big Fierce and I was doing a Travis Tritt album here in town. And I had already done three songs on the record. and. And I was just figuring out the right time to pull this new McPherson guitar out, and because the engineer was going to look at it funny because it's, the sound hole's in the wrong place, and they were going to have to re-mic it. And so I finally said, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm going to try this thing, and I pulled it out, and I played it on one song. And as soon as I played it on one song, 
they made me go back and redo the first three songs that we had recorded, which is like two days worth of work, and redo them with that guitar. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very rare that a guitar makes an impression on somebody to the point that they want to make a whole band that's being paid sit out in the lounge while, while a guy redoes all the guitars that were done before that guitar came out. So that guitar was a star. And the McPherson guitar has remor rewarded me all kinds of ways in the in the many years since then, and I hope to hope to do them an honor of, of uh, I hope to merit having a couple of them in my hands is what I hope because they're phenomenal instruments. Mm -hmm.